Now, um, coming up next, uh, we are having a, a panel discussion on wayfinding hosted by uh, Fomuana Filoni, uh, Maria Tif Tifoni. And uh, I've got to say um, that one of my nervousness about today is making sure I pronounce uh, names right. So I'm very sorry, uh, Fomuana, if I um, have it all mispronounced uh, your name. And just before we get started on that, just a reminder that you're welcome to join any of the other uh, rooms and sessions that are being hosted today, and you can find those in your online um, program. But Fomawana, I'm going to hand it over to you and let you um, introduce the amazing uh, panellists that you've got joining you for the discussion. And I've got to say um, that I am a big fan of uh, looking at the journey of uh, Walker and, and and navigating and and in fact have a uh, tattoo on my wrist with a Walker on it, kind of reminding me as uh, the metaphor for um, how we navigate through the journeys of life. So really looking forward to this session. Fafte uh, lava, Pete. Um, thank you for that. Um, yeah, Fafgalia Kua wa au mai loko soi fua malilangu ma wa fuma faya e kako filo wa ifi fia mamal malimanuia. Fafgai loko pa ia malimalmalu o le au fia i loko a fiu fiu mai makala mai a au wa ma wa lunga loka ko aso. Um, uh, kia ora tata. Um, wonderful to be in the room um, with you all. Um, and I have I'm really privileged that um, Jacko answered this call. Um, to be on part of our team for wayfinding um, and as you may know um, I mean I'm going to give it back to you Jack so you can probably introduce yourself but I was doing the numbers Jack and it was like 30 years of um, of sailing um, navigating and uh, building waka and uh, that's actually longer than your has been alive I'm just going to bring that up now um, and do we also have on our panel uh, Lopeti Sumner, who works for Flying Geese. Um, he's our CFO and youth facilitator for wayfinding. And he's actually probably the youngest qualified financial advisor in Aotearoa, which I think, you know, if you throw opportunities to Rangatahi, they can grab hold of him pretty hard. So um, I'm going to pass it to uh, Jacko. Um, and so, Jack, what I'm going to ask you to do is just to like introduce yourself as you want to. And then the last question is like, if you could you describe yourself as water today, what kind of water would you be? And then after that, little better you can have a go. Yeah, kia ora Jack. Hi, kia ora tato. Ngā mira ki a koe a whaumuna. I tēnei a tūno mai ki te kiuta ki hera o ngā ranga tira ka. A kua eke mai nei i runga i te paua ka pakata nei pāna ki tēnei o tato nei kōrero. Ngā mīrā ki a tātou katoa. Ko tia ki wepiha te kāpene e tatcha tōku inu. But everybody calls me Jack. There's a funny thing in my name. Tia ki means to guide. And to kāpene is beautiful south. It means the captain. But that's because my great-grandfather was a captain in the Kutifiru, which was the British troops that came through to suppress us back in the 1860s. Um, but I, I carried his name, and um, I spent some time in the military, about 10 years, uh, before I became a, uh, a, a voyager uh, back in, uh, well, I started doing that actually back in about 1991, I think it was. Uh, so um, I have been around for, uh, for, for a long time, uh, not as long as a, as a couple of my mates, uh, but um, I'm a... Uh, a traditional celestial navigator. Um, I think I'm the only um, master navigator in Aotearoa now. There were, were two others, but they both passed. Uh, my mentor, Hekanuku Mai Puhipi, Hector Busby, and my good friend, Philippi Evans. Um, sorry, I've just forgotten what the, the last part I was supposed to talk about. Uh, so if you could describe yourself as water today. Ah. What, yes, what kind of water right. would you be? What kind of body of water? Well, I think I uh, I embody a lot of the uh, the uh, the the you know what the ocean is like. Sometimes I'm calm, sometimes I'm not. 
sometimes I'm stormy and ragey, sometimes I'm not. Um, but I, 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 um, I consider myself a, a water man. Um, I, you know, over the years, I grew up on my harbour, and uh, and I'm a uh, very proud to uh, to know uh, and have been uh, passed down knowledge about about uh, the uh, the ecology of our of our Tauranga Mona Harbour. Um, so uh, today, I uh, I do a lot of um, corridor in regards to that end. Uh, we do a lot of uh, of work in helping to preserve the, uh, the special nature of our of our of our harbour uh, by cleaning it up, uh, by knowing its history, and sharing those with our young people. So yeah, there's a lot of that. Nakui Jack, I love it here. I'll throw that to you. Um, kia ora whanau. Um, ko oh, Ngati Hamon te Scottish Um, kauri te maunga, kauri te awa. Um. No to tell you um, cause a lot to give mama, come out to papa, call Rubeki summer to Kingua. Um, uh, what kind of water? Um, what kind of water am I feeling today? Um, probably like a, a flowing river right now. Um, just kind of going along, swaying, um, avoiding, avoiding rocks and logs, um, and just, um, taking the punches and, um, yeah, free flowing down to the Moana. Awesome, awesome. Thanks, Lovetti. Um, and so I'm going to answer that question too. And, and just so that, Pete, I appreciate that the trying of my name. My name makes many facilitators nervous. So, um, so yeah, the name given to me is Whamuina Whirolingi uh, Ria Tafuna'i. Uh, Whamuina coming from uh, the village of Fastotai, which comes from my father's side um, in Samoa. Philolingi is actually a transliteration of Fraulein, which harks back to the German occupation of Samoa um, and one of our tupuna. Um, Aria, because I'm Catholic and um, there's, you know, a million Marias out there. And then Tafuna'i after my beautiful late husband, Patrick Tafuna'i. Um, and the kind of water I am today, um, I'd say kind of, we'll find out, but it feels like a babbling brook. Um, sort of, yeah, kind of bubbling in there, and um, and I guess um, I'm coming to you from Otaitahi, uh, myself and Lopiti and Otaitahi, and and Jack is over there. I'm thinking Jack, you're in Tairanga if you're at home, um, and Kapai, uh, and today like um, we're looking at wayfinding, but from a different perspective, and that we know, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that there's enough knowledge in the room that wayfinding is a culmination of, often we call it celestial navigation, but it's actually environmental navigation of, you know, of more than just the stars, but of course the winds and the swells and um, even the, your canoe and the capacity and the capability of the people on your canoe, all of those sorts of things. Um, and my work in Aotearoa has been for the last, I'd say decade, um, is taking those principles of um, wayfinding and the discipline of also ocean voyaging where, and I mean the discipline is that, is that you can get to the, the destination and still love your people that you traveled with. Okay, so that's part of the discipline. Um, and then putting those principles and applying them to land, applying them to the programs we do on land. And I wanted to talk to you, Jack, like with wayfinding, um, so, for everyday usage or the way that your mind thinks, oh, that's a dark, dark <laughs> conversation. <laughs> um, so the way your mind thinks, like how do you think that wayfinding principles um, can be used for everyday decisions, but also for some of the really difficult decisions that you come upon in life? How is, how is that informing um, your decision making? Well, Wayfinding in the ways that um, that uh, that I've experienced on a uh, on a waka built from a Cody log um, is a little different, I suppose, to the more modern canoes today. Uh, it means that you have to be uh, more in tune with your waka, feeling all of the stresses and strains uh, that are assailing her, and and using that knowledge to help your crew to get through uh, what can be a, a harrowing experience from time to time. 
uh, but more often a, a, a brilliant experience of, uh, of the ocean that you might never uh, experience again. Uh, I say that because, um, you know, we have uh, a lot of people that come to us, they come and they experience and, and then they go. Uh, you know, somebody like myself that's been in here for 30 years, uh, we're, we're an anomaly uh, of, uh, of, uh, of those types of people that, um, that, uh, uh, that love everything about that. You know, storms, they frighten everyone, they frighten me. But you take those experiences and um, I don't just, I don't just, work in the Waka world, uh, but I use my experiences uh, of hardship to help me to uh, to translate that into uh, into people that come to me for uh, uh, to help them with different things, um, uh, to stay calm when things get hard, uh, you know, and that's my job. My job is, uh, when, I, when I'm voyaging, is not just to find a way to wherever we're going, but is to be calm in the tempest, uh, and to uh, and to encourage people to to stand in that in that same way, and to be strong. And it's not about conquering fear; it's about controlling it. And uh, and once people are able to do that, then uh, you know they can take that with them into their normal lives, and uh, and conquer anything. Uh, we've had lots of young people coming out of gangs, uh, uh, you know, sailing with us. Some of them go back. But many of them uh, change their lives, and for the better, uh, in most instances. And so, um, you know, we work with all all uh, different communities. And um, I also use my experiences on the Waka to come back and uh, and work with my own people uh, in Tauranga Mona, and uh, and wider, of course, in uh, in terms of inspiring them to do better in their lives. Or just to be there to help out with whatever is necessary to, uh, to, um, I suppose, to overcome whatever it is that's in front of people that they find hard to do. Uh, I, I won't say I'm expert at it, but um, I always find that um, that uh, good leadership isn't isn't about being that, that guy that's yelling at people. Although I do a lot of that, <clears throat> it's actually about being being present. Uh, if you're present for the people there and they need you to be present, then um, I find that that's uh, my job today. You know, I'm at the end of my career, and so I've got to be there present for my community. Uh, sorry, just lost you there, Jack. But um, I'm going to just take this opportunity um, to throw that to Lord Betty. You've been running um, Wayfinding Youth Programs now for, oh, maybe like two and a half years or something like that. So yeah. what are you, how are you seeing young people responding to, I guess, not, I guess wayfinding, but also how um, Walker and, and, and reintroducing them to those principles? Yeah, um, the wayfinding, I guess, concept is, is good. It's, it's simple, it's um, quite easy to understand, and it's full of hard truths um, where our rangatahi are really excel um, and that because it's just full of observing um, your environment, um, where you are, and I guess where you want to be, and um, answering those hard questions that will come up. Um, so, yeah, I, I, um, I don't know, you, you've been in a couple of workshops uh, before me now that when um, we come across adversity or problems that they can see coming forward, um, they're really good at, I guess, identifying them and overcoming them, finding solutions. Um, so yeah, it's very, our Tupuna were amazing people, but they also made it quite simple for us to understand where we have to, um, reading the environment and um, how to overcome those kind of things. Um, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Um, and so um, for those who don't know, um, our company, delivers wayfinding programs in schools around entrepreneurship and resilience. Um, and we also then work with um, organizations around wayfinding for treaty partnership and just customizing, finding a problem and then creating the framework through a wayfinding lens. Um, and I think one of the things that we've seen and um, Robetti and I um, were doing a bit of data crunch the other day is that, yeah, young people given 
um, given the problem, not only are so practical in these solutions, um, but also come up with, I guess, real innovation. They're really, they are observing the environment. They are concerned about things like climate. They're even concerned about, you know, the health of their families, which if you think about Māori and Pacifica and uh, health statistics, I don't know if you thought about how children feel like in those homes where they see, you know, um, ill health around them and just that kind of extra anxiety it might bring. Um, so, and I think with the, the way of finding principles, um, you know, we love to like throw the, the big problems in there. I just want to see if Jack uh, is back in the room. Jack, if, oh, there you go. Um, Jack, I was, like I've just come back from you in Climate Week in New York and there was a lot of talk out there, um, some really great inspiring stuff, but also I think some stuff that gets repeated every year. Um, <clears throat> when you think about the wayfinding principles and you were talking about being, you know, controlling fear and um, being present and that, um, how can you see like an approach like wayfinding could be part of, you know, like when we're looking for solutions or approaches to climate change action in Aotearoa? Uh, okay, so back in, before 2008, I had no idea about climate change and environmental this and that. Um, but I went to, uh, I went to Sotawal, uh, in the, in Micronesia and, uh, uh, our teacher, Mo Piolu, he granted us the right to teach, uh, in the safety of his school, the Wuriang School of Traditional Navigation, um, in Micronesia. And a lot of people are probably thinking, well, why did you go all the way over there to learn that? And uh, one of the reasons for that is because a lot of the knowledge to, uh, the practical knowledge had been put aside here in Aotearoa. So uh, one of the things was we went back to, to relearn that. And um, so we were given the right to teach. So, and in that, uh, when I was uh, on the last day, I, I went through a four day ceremony mostly drinking 18 coconuts, but um, <laughs> we won't get too deep into that. Um, and at the end of that, Mo Paolo put a place, a little piece of white coral on my right wrist. And he says, you are the light. You're now responsible for preserving life. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't absolutely know what that meant. And, and so I came home and uh, I started listening to people talking about our environment, how we need to preserve and protect our environment, especially in our harbour. So uh, I thought I would uh, research a little bit more about that and go along to some of the meetings and, you know, being present uh, and just learning what it was, that what those issues were for our people uh, in regards to, I suppose, the, uh, the constant uh, effect that uh, humanity has on the environment, you know, with pollution, uh, with overuse, all those things, and so, um, so I learned a little bit more about uh, about our ocean as well, certification, blah blah blah, uh, and uh, I decided, okay, I want to work more in this space, and so uh, I've been um, I've been very active in challenging uh, locally, not not so much nationally, locally, our uh, our industry and how they affect our harbour, and uh, I've written lots of submissions against some of the progress that's being uh, pushed forward by most of the industry, mostly, uh, dare I say it, our, our port, because they have the biggest effect on uh, on the health of our harbour. And so, um, you know, working in that space became um, became something that I'm now passionate about. So, and, uh, and, and even to the point where when we weren't able to do those things during, you know, the COVID lockdowns, I was out cleaning, cleaning our, our beaches uh, instead of staying at home, wondering what I can do. So I could do that on my own. So I just went out and gathered rubbish and did all that sort of stuff, posted it up on Facebook and all that sort of stuff to try and influence some of our people to do the same. You know, so there's, so in terms of, uh, and that's, I think, showing uh, some leadership. I, I, I don't know what leadership absolutely is. Uh, and um, and I, what I do know is is that people respect you, respect you if you turn up and be involved with them, uh, you know. And uh, and so um, 
yeah, I, I think I, I don't know whether I've answered your question adequately, but um, uh, that's what I've uh, I've uh, transferred a lot of my energy uh, into preserving the health of our harbour, uh, and I've also uh, uh, joined some groups um, online. We have uh, quite a few meetings and things on Zoom uh, in regards to preserving uh, the health and life of our of our oceans. So, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of work in that. I, 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 you know, we haven't got time to go into all of that. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm doing today. Oh, sorry. And just, just one other thing. And what we do is, uh, is we educate our young people uh, about voyaging and about all of the connections that it has uh, environmentally. So, uh, so that our young people know that they, you know, every little bit of uh, plastic that they drop on the ground uh, is going to, in some way, affect our environment, and uh, they need to be more careful. Young people are really good at uh, at being, you know, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, um, responsible environmentally, uh, but sometimes they lose track of that. You know, we just got to keep them on track. I don't know. I went on a little bit long. <laughs> uh, so Always good to hear your words. And it's one of the things I really love about working with um, navigators and walker builders is extremely practical, but also working at multi-level, you know, like you're saying, submissions to the councils. And I know you work on some sort of government fora as well. And then, but also just going and actually being that example and then picking up the rubbish. And, and one thing I've always enjoyed with you is that, you know, you often will also talk about some of the errors that you make along the way. And I think that real humble sharing helps us as we try and, you know, step out into new places and know that we'll stumble because that's what's the part of the journey. Um, and um, someone did ask about <laughs> the principles of wayfinding. It's a little bit difficult to go into this right now, but what I will say is that if you think about wayfinding as a holistic model of um, you know, moving across an ocean and understanding the social elements of the people on your canoe, understanding the strengths and the potential and limitations of your canoe, understanding the patterns of the ocean through much study and conversation, the observance of wind and patterns, the seasonality, the celestial. And I, Jack has a famous quote around about, it's not just about the stars that you can see, but the ones you can't see when it's a cloudy day and how that confidence to navigate by that. My own um, sort of mentor, Hotoroa Barclay Kerr, he talks about the wayfinder being able to find opportunity in adversity. And I think that's, you know, when you're in command of people's lives, like you are at sea, you have to be that calm and looking for opportunity. Um, I just want to throw this to Lopeti. Um, there was a question there about like, what can wayfinding do around wellbeing? Um, and um, what, I guess in the experience that you've seen with the workshops that we run, what, what are you seeing in there? And it's not just the wellbeing workshops. Every workshop we do, there's always elements of vulnerability, right? Um, so what are you seeing in that? Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, in terms of the wellbeing side, it's I always, I have a lot of um, younger siblings as well, still in school and also younger um, friends. And I always um, <laughs> talk to them about it. I say, oh, how do you find it? Um, even post workshop and then a couple of months later down the track. And I was talking to um, one of my friends who struggles quite a bit in school, he's um, dyslexic. And I was talking to him, he's like, oh, how, how is it? Like, how'd you find it? He's like, oh, it's good, eh? He's like, he said, I feel better. I said, oh, like, what, what do you mean you feel better? What, what kind of part do you feel better? And he's like, I just feel better in general. And then <clears throat> we got talking about it. He said, now that I know, like, things, um, that I can control and I can't control. Um, he feels better understanding it and knowing that's part of his uh, moana in his environment and better navigating um, those, I guess, those kind of times and hardship. <clears throat> um, and <laughs> it's always funny at the start of the day, um, normally the, the, the rangatai are quite shy and they you know they don't really want to interact, interact with us. And then by the end of the day, we're all laughing and having a good time. And then 
they say to me, oh, why weren't you like this at the start? I'm like, at the start, you didn't even want to talk to us. What are you talking about? But I guess <laughs> just seeing that grow throughout the day. And then even now we um, joke about it. Probably about a year, a year later, some of my mates, we, um, we were like, oh, yeah. I'm not sure if that person's on our walker or if you keep that up, I'm not sure if you're going to be on my walker when I say. Um, so just always keeping ourselves in check um, and just having those constant reminders of like who who you want around you and um, I guess who support you the most as well as, um, yeah, your morals as well. Um, but yeah, just, yeah, I can't, I can't really fully explain it, but it's amazing seeing the growth of... Um, that I'm going to tell you just throughout the day and then post-workshop as well. Yeah. And I mean, guess one of the things that we emphasize in our wayfinding practice here, because I am full Samoan, with a touch of German, um, is our treaty partnership and our treaty responsibilities. And, you know, so that's really key with all the work that we do. And what's been interesting is that using, I guess, the principles on, I think, about wayfinding of knowing who's on your walker, knowing your crew and by introducing ourselves through the lens of Te Tiriti to understand, um, like for myself, just I, I celebrate the tree because I'm grateful to be in Aotearoa. When you talk to young people and you give them that, then what we're seeing in schools is actually the report back from some teachers is that Pasifika are more honouring of that. They are like starting to embrace their sort of Māori students and just um, also feel really um, like they're also embracing Te Reo Māori a lot. So they're understanding the context in which they live in. Um, now, and I think that's part of wayfinding because you cannot escape the environment. And Jack, um, we've got um, five minutes to go. I know we've had um, we've had a whole series of questions, some of them, and I'm, I'm grateful for those people pasting links that will answer that. Um, what would you say, like, is your greatest lesson from the journeys that you've undertaken, and I know there've been many, um, that when you've walked away, this is what your, this is like your top tip that you would give your mokopuna about, um, about what life can be like from your experience. Two instances, I suppose. Um, one of those was being in my first storm and uh, terrified out of my wits. And, um, and having my uh, teacher and mentor, Mo look sailing with me. And uh, we got to a point where we almost capsized. And uh, I'm sitting there looking at him. He's got, such a, he's got a smile on his face, no fear in his eyes. And I thought to myself, good Lord, how do you get to be like that guy? And um, that was back in 1992. Then in 2012, uh, being in a similar situation in somebody else's first storm and then looking up into these terrified eyes and realizing, oh, they're in that space I was in. Oh, I've got to be like Mo today. So I winked at her and smiled and then uh, walked around just puttering around on the deck, you know, in a, in a raging storm, I'm puttering around doing stuff and um, just to uh, put her at ease. And I think that's the, uh, for me, uh, the, the lesson I get from that is that uh, everything moves and is cyclical, isn't it? You know, you start at that point where you're new and then it's, and you have somebody with, with extreme experience there to help you get through that time. And then you find yourself in a similar position uh, more than 20 years later, um, looking at this woman who's, absolutely terrified and you know what I got from that was just the little things that you do that help those people to get past uh, I suppose that initial fear and find that if he's okay then maybe I'm okay when he starts freaking then I should really start freaking <laughs> and you know that was the first leg of, uh, of a long voyage to Easter Island and uh, she never left that's a telling thing. She never left. She didn't want to get off. She didn't want to go home. She wanted to carry on. And she went all the way to East Island and we flew her home from there. So, you know, that, that whole thing about resilience, everybody has it. You've just got to be able to help them through those things. So 
that I, I'm actually quite proud of the fact that because um, she had she's it was her who told me that it was the wink and the smile that helped you get through that. I didn't have a bottle of uh, of um, of Raki, which is uh, Dalmatian moonshine, which uh, Moe the Island had on my at that time, and he gave me a shot of that to help me get through that uh, that time. But you know, those are the sorts of things that um, that help people. Uh, I hope that answered your question. It does, and I guess it speaks to why we um, in this um, conversation, you know, we have Lobetti with us. Um, who is part of that journey um, and that where, I mean, succession, I mean, as Indigenous peoples, it is only, you know, everything we do is about succession and building a stronger new generation and giving them opportunity. Um, I see we've just come to the end of our session. Um, so look, feel free to reach out if you'd like to learn more. I really want to thank you, Stephen, amazing human. Thank you, Pete, and thank you all for your time and attention this morning. Kia ora no. Oh, kia ora. Kia ora. Uh, uh, that was, uh, and Jack and Lupeti, thank you so much for um, sharing all of that wisdom. There was so much to be able to um, hold on and, and learn um, from there. I really loved uh, the part you said around um, it's not just about the stars you can see, but about the ones you can't see, um, and also the thing around finding opportunity um, and adversity, and that really um, connects to me in terms of from my work in community development and what I saw um, uh, in my hometown of Kaw Kawateri or, or Westport um, when we went through some things and how much of a better place uh, that's become um, through adversity. Um, and also um, some of the amazing work we've seen in Ōtautahi um, here, post-earthquake, et cetera. So um, thank you so much for, for joining us. Up next, we've got...